Well, here we, oh no, more bad teeth. More bad teeth. Yep. <laughs> How much can we, more can we go out of Larry's artificial teeth? His false teeth. <laughs> well, I paid a lot for it. Some people don't pay it. Uh, not as much for real teeth as I paid for these. Mm. And you're right, I figure they ought to be good for at least another show or two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> until, or at least until the hate mail starts coming in. Or until Halloween when we do Bob and for Apples. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Bob and for Apples. Yeah, uh -huh. They were a good bunch. Well, let's get the witch in here and see what we gotta do. <laughs> we can't catch the witch. Oh. We need a witch catcher. Mm -hmm. Someone send one of those I in. I told the witch catcher. catcher uh, well, enough of that. <laughs> Don't want to get sued, you know. You want to read this? Oh, sure, right. sure, sure. Dear Laban and Larry, we need some help. Grandma left her teeth at the preacher's house last Saturday night when her circle met. Now, for those of you who don't know what a circle is, all of us who grew up in the country, that was a women's yeah. group, I guess, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah a church every group. church had several. Uh -huh. Had a circle. Mm -hmm. She called up when she discovered... <laughs> she called up when she discovered they were gone, but the preacher's wife swears on her husband's big stack of Bibles <laughs> that she hasn't seen them. She has filed a claim on her homeowner's insurance, <laughs> but there's no telling when they'll pay. Problem is, Granny loves corn on the cob, <laughs> but we reckon <laughs> she ain't going to be eating none of that anytime soon. What can we do? By the way, the preacher's wife just called, and while she was a-talking, she said that the Lord has passed a miracle on their hound dog, Big Buford. <laughs> Seems he could eat dog biscuits for the first time in five years. <laughs> well, there's a miracle for you. Thank you, the Carters from Woodpecker, Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> what's it mean? What's it mean? I think I found the teeth. I believe yeah. that's probably grandma's teeth right there. But unfortunately, these are original teeth. Ah. <laughs> so anyway. I'm telling look. you, I'm suffering. I am suffering. The pollen is so bad. And, you know, of course, our studio here where we do our show well, is you heard in the, the middle of the woods. Well, yeah, you heard camera well, number three sneezing Andre there. is. Andre the sneezer. <laughs> So forgive me, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cough on you or at you, but I'm just suffering. Well, of course, you know, this will, will bring a letter from Cough Lady, oh, a yes. whole new person <laughs> that we haven't heard from yet. What are you making? I'm making uh, some kind of, oh, what is this mess? Three corn casserole. Three and, corns in a casserole. Right, right. And it was sent in by Brandy Cochran, I can't believe, oh, Brandy, come on, Brandy, of El Dorado Springs, Missouri. And Brandy, I gotta tell you, this is a wonderful recipe. I'll tell you in advance, it's it's good. And and Brandy's any, brother was vodka tonic, right? Wasn't it? Uh -huh. Any it. ignit can make this uh, well, recipe. That's not very Even nice, you. Mr. Johnson. I'm doing a <laughs> ham and egg supper, except the ham portion is spam. <gasps> Sent in by Santa A. Mark. Santa, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Santa. I've never heard of anyone actually, except for you know who. Yeah. You know, everyone knows there's no sanity well, clause. Mm -hmm. uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, another great one. I tell you what, it looks to be a good recipe though. Well, good. Even though it uses that mm -hmm. other product there we're and, talking about. And uh, the lovely right. Doris. Oh yeah, Doris is going to be here too. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> She's doing Casey's International Corn Beef Casserole. Sent in by Beverly Casey of. Penn Salkin, <laughs> New Jersey. That's why I wanted you to do that. <laughs> Penn Salkin. Larry is a radio uh -oh. personality and knows how to say all those hard uh -oh. names. Penn Salkin, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get a bunch Whenever. of people from everybody in Penn Salkin now. Well, can what? I show everybody to do the first step in this thing? Do it. All right, this is a casserole. Use a one that's at least two cups. And this is what my grandma used to do. We gotta have a stick of margarine in this and I had to let it soften. So you take this. Now that's smart. And diddle around in here to grease your casserole. See, with. the old people used to know how to maximize things back when they really did need to cook cheap. And you'd go to her house and you'd open up the refrigerator and all these little papers would fall <laughs> out where she was saving the butter wraps and what have you. But this this is a real good way to do it. So uh, just remember that that's a little 
homemaking tip from Laban and Larry. Well, that's pretty smart, and mm -hmm. I, I'm, I used to see Tootsie do that occasionally, believe it or not. And you know something else Tootsie used to do? When she'd make pimento cheese, uh -huh. the Miracle Whip or whatever she would use for it, she'd take all that out and mix it all up and diddle it around, and then she would take all that and put it back in that jar and put the mm -hmm. lid back on it until she was ready to use it. Yep. How about that? You gotta be smart, smart, smart these smart. days. Smart, smart. Okay, now I've got a stick of softened butter and I'm adding to it uh, an egg and some, I swear, they're sneezing over on this side. And, and cracking over on gum the other over side, to the right. They're cracking gum. I'll tell you, you don't get any respect around here. And then a, a cup of sour cream. And that's all. I'm just going to put them all together and then we'll what mix them that? up. What is that? It's an egg. I had to oh. <laughs> bring it in. I didn't want to bring the whole carton. So I just wrapped it up in its so own little It looked like something nest. secret. No, it's just in my fine little piece of you know what where. Well, my recipe starts out with an eight ounce can of whole kernel corn. Well, <laughs> I went to this little cheap little store I go to. It's not so cheap. It's right expensive, to <laughs> you want to know the truth. It's the most irritating store in all of Southwest Virginia. And I don't know why I go there other than the fact that it's on my way home. <laughs> so anyway, they didn't have any eight ounces. They had eight ounces of cream corn, and they had eight ounces of oh. Mexican corn, and they had eight ounces of corn corn, but they didn't have just plain <laughs> corn. So I had to buy a big one, and what I did is I split it. I did half of it in a recipe I've already baked. I'm going to do half of it here today. It comes out about right. But the first thing you have to do is take it and drain, as they say around here, all of the juice off in it and put that into a measuring device because the next thing you will do after you've drained that is you will fill it the rest of the way to make one and a quarter cups of liquid. Put some milk in there to bring it up to about one and a quarter cups. And that's going to be your liquid part of it. And that's all you do for right now. And of course, hold on to the corn. Don't throw that away. You know, <laughs> you, we're going to use it later. You couldn't find an eight or a 16 ounce can of corn anymore because our standards and measurement people uh, at the corn companies. This one uh, is 15.25 ounces instead of 16, and this one is 15. So they've they've reduced the size of the can again, but not the price. Oh, I'm telling you, you just get it from everything you do. Next thing I have to do is open a can of the secret ingredient. This calls for spam. And the next thing you got to do is try and get it out of there because you're going to have to. This is not get a that good man thing. a tissue. <laughs> so from my side, is get it out of there because you're going to have to chop it real fine. Well, you can open the other end and push. Well, I could if I was mine to. But yesterday, the other day, I was able to get it out of there. Just plopped right out, like just there like. There it comes. There it's there. coming out. There it there is. There you go. Ain't that attractive. There's some spam jelly on it. <laughs> <laughs> and next thing you do then is you start cutting it and chopping it up. So I found that if I chopped it, <laughs> I don't know why I'm tickled about this recipe, but I am. So just chop it very carefully and very tenderly. <laughs> well, that sounds <laughs> like a hymn right that we used to have in the Broadman hymnal. Oh, that was... Uh, Da, 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 tenderly mm -hmm, is calling. Yeah. We all grew up with the same hymns, I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, I always wondered about that. Now, what was that? Was that uh, what church you go to? Methodist. Methodist. See, mine was Disciples of Christ. We all sang the same songs. Mm -hmm. They just put a different logo on the outside of the uh -huh. book. <laughs> Whoops. We'll be hearing about that. Okay. <laughs> I know some of those people at Heathens out there. Him lady will be in jail. <laughs> That, you know, we have had I people. think you people should just be grateful that we know hymns around <laughs> here. I think that's pretty encouraging. You know, what? We, we did. We, had, we have had a lady write in one time that just laid us out because we were making fun of the church. Oh, we and were honey, not. We, no. Would I mean, we have gone to church, both of us, all our lives, and still go. And if we want to make a little bit of fun of it, we will. The name of the song was Softly and Tenderly, Tenderly Jesus is Called. Mm -hmm. That was the name of the song. Okay. See? 
Mm-hmm. I, know, I remember the stuff. We know our hymns. We're church-going boys. Okay, I'm still chopping. Now, if you chop it like a right about like that, that's just about right, okay? Mm. Fine little choppy chops. And you just got to keep doing that till you go through that whole thing. So just keep moseying on. Johnson, go ahead. All right. Well, I've got my cup of sour cream, my soft stick of butter, and an egg in here, and I'm going to beat it up. And your mar it's actually it's margarine, and it really does have to be soft. So when you get it, leave it out for a while. Don't melt it, just make sure it's real soft. I find if you leave it in the car for a couple of days, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> and don't laugh, folks, he does. It's a miracle we're not all dead. <laughs> Actually, you know, now we'll get letters on this too, but it's the truth. M margarine actually can stay out of the refrigerator for a while because you see big displays of it in the grocery stores. Well, so it can just, miracle yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, really? you, you can do stuff like that. Just, I know that Craig Claiborne talks all the time about uh, we've always left the fried chicken out on the stove overnight so that, you know, tomorrow you get up and get a piece. But it's probably a kill you today and somebody will sue us if we say do that. Now, I've got two cans of corn I'm going to mix up in here. One is cream style and one is regular that has to be drained. And I'll tell you the great thing about this recipe is this is something you literally can pull out of your cabinet and refrigerator at the last minute. That's good. I didn't so mean easy. to get in your shot. Well, you did. Now let's see, can I operate? Let's see if you can operate a now can Now wait a opener, minute, where's that high price can opener somebody sent us last it's week? It's in the cabinet, they tell me. Well, that's all right. It's in, well, oh, well don't worry about it. He'll yeah. have it open before you get back, Doris. Well, while he's opening that, I have to take three eggs and crack them and beat them. So I'm gonna do that oh, right no. now. And you will see over to the right here, I've taken my ham product, which by the way, <laughs> if you wanted to, you could also use actual ham. There's a startling thing. This is after all called a ham and egg supper. So anyway, you could use, well, I'm not saying this isn't real ham, it is, but you could use actual ham ham instead of spam ham. Are you catching the drift here, folks? Take three eggs and mix them up. This sounds to be uh, maybe a, an old-timey recipe, I don't know. It's difficult to say. Now, you got that ready to go, and the next thing you do is take a little uh, fat-free cooking uh, stuff, no-stick cooking spray, and spray a, a baking dish with it, just a little bit, and set that aside and get it ready. And in a couple of minutes, we'll put this whole thing together. Oh, now I've got to drain a can of corn juice. And let's, I guess I'll do it over here in the sink. Goofy. That's an attractive shot, don't you think? Well, you know. Mr. Johnson's, huh? What? Mr. Johnson's haunches. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel like Betty Grable in this pose. Uh, yeah, you, you, you look kind of like Betty Grable. Painted oh. on the side of an airplane. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe yeah. I should do something. No, no, okay. I, I've, got, I've got the. Corn. I don't know what Drink. to do, and Jim is nervous. He can't I've keep got, up to me. What? All right, now let's see. I got both of the cans of corn in there, and let me stir that up a little bit. Well, aren't you going to kind of smush up your corn doing that? No, not with this thing. Well, I've never have heard it. tell of using an electric mixer on corn. Well, you have now. <laughs> Well, All right. he was right delicate now, about it. Now, go ahead. Now, I have one more secret ingredient to put in here, and then it'll all be done. Okay. Well, now you got to add uh, all of this stuff together and put it together. <laughs> this is what you got to do. So what we do is we take our egg and put it in there. That's three eggs beaten up just a little bit. And your corn, about eight ounces of corn, and do not get the stuff that is in uh, the creamed corn. You know what? I'm going to move this over. Is it all right? Can I move it over? Is it going to bother anybody? Woo, beautifully done. Also, at this time, you will put in the ham product that goes in there. See how beautifully I chopped every single piece is completely chopped thoroughly. I'm really amazed. In the same amount if of... If we didn't know better, we'd sworn you'd worked in a fine restaurant somewhere. And then, of course, you have to take, and it calls specifically for two cups of shredded, sharp, processed cheese. Low down store, of course, didn't have the stuff uh, so that you could shred it. The only process sharp they had was in these little individual packs 
and you're not going to believe this, but I stood around today for a half hour taking those things out of those little packs and chopping it up so you all would not have to see me go through that today. So there you go, two cups of that. And as you can see, once again, each one has been chopped perfectly into a little square. It is a talent that I have. Now, the next thing you do also is you need to put in there a cup of fine cracker crumbs goes in there. That goes in there. It's cracker meal. It's close enough to the likes of this recipe. There you go. And then put your milk in there and mix it all up real good. And that's going to be your recipe. And make sure you mix it real well. I just took some crackers I had left over at home and crumbled them all up for the one that I brought in today. Just smashed them mm -hmm. up with uh, 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 your fist. No, anger. no, no. I had a rolling pin. Did I leave anything out, uh, Miss Doris? She's not saying much today, and you know that always just mightily worries me. <laughs> she hasn't even sneezed today. Uh, like myself, she has not had any problems with this. Go ahead, Johnson. Oh, oh, yeah. And then the next thing you do is you, you pour it in here into the greased dish and you bake that at 350 degrees for 40, 45 minutes or until set. And when it comes out, it looks like this. Well, for which is pretty near what it looks like uh -huh. when it goes in. Look at that. Oh, isn't that startling? There it is. Lovely. Very nice. We'll be heating that up and we'll be eating that with our lips very yep. shortly. Mr. Johnson. All right. Now, into my mixture, uh, we now put a box of corn muffin mix. Uh, you can use any variety, about an eight ounce box, and just give it a tap, and then you mix all that in. So let me work on this now. While he's doing that, I'll give my recipe. All right. The ham and egg supper is so simple that I've already finished it, and we still have 20 more minutes on the Oh, program. no! Got him scared. One eight ounce can of whole kernel corn, some milk, one 12 ounce can of Spam finely diced. I would imagine you could use any kind of ham on this. Two cups of shredded sharp processed cheese and hope to heavens you can find a block of it so you really can shred it. One cup of fine cracker crumbs, three eggs slightly beaten, put it all in there. 45 minutes or so at 350 degrees or until set. Very lovely recipe. Mr. Johnson. All right, well, let me give my uh, recipe ingredients. You need a stick of butter, an egg, a cup of sour cream, a 16 or 15 ounce can of regular corn, same of cream style corn, and a box of corn muffin mix. And that's all you do to mine. Mine, let me get it over in my casserole here. Uh, you bake this for an hour, a good hour, at 375 degrees. And it just comes out beautifully. Mine is over there. Larry, maybe you could get mine out of the microwave. No, that's mine oh, in the microwave. Well, where is mine? Sitting out on the sink. Oh, okay. Well, ask Aunt Doris if she'd come in well, and bring it over Well, ladies and gentlemen, here. it's that time of the day when Miss Doris has to come in. Yeah. And How that, you doing, Doris, baby? Come over here and give and me a big old And this is the way kiss. mine looks when it's finished. Give me a big old smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. You're not going to laugh all day like no. you did the last time. Well, uh, Look at her. She's got bows. Yeah. What's that? What was the name of that song? The Zing 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 Buttons and, and Bows. Buzz. She's got buttons and bows. Well, you know she's Day Eleven's grandmother. Oh, <laughs> I think she was talking today. She had to wear a hat earlier, uh, and she said, and "I think she looks a little oh, like Mamie Eisenhower." Uh, <laughs> well, you know, you know, the last time we had a big party here, uh, Doris uh, came and and did that wonderful rendition of "I Want to Be a Cowboy Sweetheart." Remember that? <laughs> Well, on my porch right now, the sun shines in, and I have to wear a hat in order to read, so it sort of flattened me out. But anyway. So her hair is where the sun don't shine. I, I had to do a corned beef casserole. It takes five medium potatoes, parred, boiled, and drained, half a cup of milk, half a stick of butter, a fourth a teaspoon dill weed, salt and pepper to taste, one small can sauerkraut, one can corned beef, 
one canned corn, and a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese. And you mash your potatoes with, it, with your uh, milk, butter, dill, salt, and pepper, and put it on the bottom of the pan, and then you layer it with uh, the, the sauerkraut. It doesn't say anything about draining any of these things, but I'm sure you're supposed to. So I drained the sauerkraut, put that in, and I sliced the corned beef and put it on top of it in the corn. Well, you bake it in the oven for 325 for 45 minutes, but the corn dries out terribly, and I should think you'd have to put a cover or something on it to keep it a little moist, because when uh, it, it's come up a little bit, because I put some uh, foil right on it as soon as I got it out of the oven, but it was very, you can see how very yeah, dry the, the, the corn got. It looks good on the air there, but uh, here it looks like little hard knots. So if you so don't have a cover, you could just use foil. Foil right? or a cover for the pan, but it doesn't call for it, but I would advise it, I think, mm -hmm. to uh, keep it from drying out. Well, there you but have it. Looks it looks good. Some fabulous know. tips from the very lovely Doris. Thank you very much for stopping by today. And always say please and thank you and look both ways before crossing. Right. Uh, speaking, <laughs> speaking of Doris, we have uh, the Cook Sisters coming Our, by. <laughs> Are they here she's again? Kill us. Oh, I know she's going, oh, yes, you know, they love to come in when we're running a little long. Well, let's go over, <laughs> let's go over to thank that uh, high-priced Cook Sisters set and see them. Hey, Tootsie. Huh? If you want plenty of eggs all year long, you got to make sure the hens are comfortable. That's cool in the summertime and warm in the winter, and they'll lay like there's no tomorrow. I'm Sister Cook. And I'm Tootsie Cook. And, and we're, we're the, the Cook, Cook Sisters. Sisters. You're on. <laughs> <laughs> got caught. I well, think, I think we're ready to go. Well, my coast. recipe's coming out. Oh, Doris, it's nice and cold. Oh, it's so hot, I can hardly stand it. Oh. No, no, we don't have time to put it back in. It's time to eat, Doris. When it's time to eat, just because you keep your children's waiting all the time for cold food, don't mean we're going to be waiting around here. We'll, we'll find a way here. It's, it's a little warm on top. <laughs> Well, I hope you're not going to feed me any nasty food. Oh, it's today. not nasty, Laban. It's just a little gelatinous. Okay, there you go. Have a big oh. wad of that. Looks real good. A lump of this. A lump of this, a wad of that. Oh, me. And let's try Doris's recipe, the land of the hard corn. Well, it looks oh. wonderful. Look at that. All layered. It's and sort of like a shepherd's pie well, it really in reverse. Is. Oh, how delicate, Mr. Johnson. Well, I can't help it. I have a little <laughs> he's spoon. Just, he's just clawing it out with a fork or something. <laughs> Which one shall we try first? I don't know. Which one's yours? The one closest to me. Huh? Oh, oh, let's this see. This one yours? Yes. And what is it? This is a three corn bake. Three corn casserole. Is it any good? I like it. I think it's real nice. It sure is easy. Mm-hmm. That's mm, good. It's got a nice flavor to it. It does. Real corny. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from the fact that thanks to Doris, mine is totally cold. It's real cheesy and real good. Cheese would have been the cheese would have been much better if it had been melted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What do you think? It's pretty good. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Have we tried Doris's mess here? I tell no. you, this is a beautiful recipe. It really is. Now, I wonder what this sauerkraut will do oh, to you. Oh, I've hurt my tooth on a, a corn. It's so hard, <laughs> I think I put out my molar. That is wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's a great recipe that Doris did. And Doris, I think that really and truly, I, I know that it is sort of tough when your corn gets hard on you, but that, no, it's that, not bad. No, it really is. It's really great. You probably could do this using real corned beef and not, well, not that the stuff in the can isn't Well, real, sure. But, yeah, but, that's right. Uh, you could. Just as you could do this recipe yeah, with uh, any real old type of ham if you wanted mm -hmm. to. Mm -mm -mm. Well, strangely enough, it's all come out pretty well. Of course, you know, I just, I just adore sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. I really do. I love, just love sauerkraut, but except sauerkraut's only good if you eat it with mashed potatoes. And you know, mine <laughs> could be made mm. more heart healthy by using egg substitute and uh, mm -hmm. the artificial sour cream, you know. 
so by the time you get to it, it wouldn't be so terribly bad for mm -hmm. you. Well, I know you're always looking for ways to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Unclog my arteries. Unclog your soul. Well, it's a good thing that we've done here, and it's just a shame it didn't take longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because it seems like we've been sitting there for an hour. You read that letter too fast at the beginning. I think That's you're right. what's wrong. <sighs> you know, it's just, it's incredible. It really is. So seldom do we have the occasion to just relax at the end of a program. <laughs> but, oh, Doris is here oh, with the desserts. <laughs> oh, no, no. I love it. Oh, oh. Mm. Dr. Needhawk will...